Okay, well what I'm doing at, at the moment is I'm fine-tuning a program basically to suit the, the tools that I've got to do the job. Initially when I uh, wrote out the G-code uh, I didn't know what exactly what the tooling would be required for it. It's drilling all these spoke holes which I, I, you have probably seen on previous uh, job but basically I didn't have any stub drills and I need stub drills to give me the height clearance height above the job. As you can see there's there's not a lot of space between the uh, before the Z axis stop kicks in and the last thing you want to do is crash into this as you're moving back and forth. I also thought I'd have to go into this side to do some countersinking. As it turns out it's not going to happen that way. I'm going to have to tilt it back up because this this angle here gets in the way of things so I'll tilt it up 9 degrees and that'll give me enough clearance there. But basically I also wanted to fine, fine tune it so that these holes underneath here, these spoke holes they're countersunk from the inside and if you don't get that dead spot on uh, then you cut into some of the thread that's holding this onto, the, onto this, this um, fixture and it, it, it wouldn't probably be okay but it, it wouldn't look very nice put it that way and also there's a step on the inside just, just level with this that obviously you have to make sure it's clear of that as well so that you don't want to countersink, countersinking part of that away and similarly here uh, you've got to move across and keep clear of that so you have to kind of uh, do a trial and a trial run up. The first thing I did was drill one hole and just put a small drill through it without altering the X axis setting or the Y axis setting. Put a small hole through it, just did a quick check, it looked okay so I went on with that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just tuning everything, everything up to to go to, to, to machine it correctly. I'll explain what this is here. The machine's telling this to telling uh, the table to move to X minus 230 which if you look here we're just about there at minus 230 which is that position here with that drill in and I know just checking that, that when it goes through it should be clear enough to countersink. So it's telling it to go to X230 a 133 that's the angle it's at at the moment it's at 93 that's plus 93 that's minus 133 there wherever it was I said minus two yeah one one no that's 133 we're at 93 here so you know it 93 is just off the screen at the top here so that's the angle that's the distance and on the next line it's telling us to do, go G0 which is the feed rate uh, which is 20% of F200 for plunge so it's going to go down uh, to R87 that's the, that's the height that it will actually start to go into the feed mode at and it will finish at Z76 and you'll see here we're at uh, 87 here and that is just clearing the work and uh, traveling down with the Z axis is actually moving in a in a, um, a negative direction so it reduces that number so Z76 uh, has more or less 10 millimeters of depth of cut through there so that's what I'm doing I'm just tidying this up I'm in the edit mode of uh, editing G code in Pathpilot I find it very easy to alter things and it becomes kind of intuitive when you look at a program you get to recognize patterns more than anything and when something doesn't follow that pattern then you know alarm bells should uh, ring which is what happened when I well I didn't notice it in fact I noticed it when I was playing it simulating it that I hadn't actually centered the work up the first time properly so that's why I altered things. But anyway I'll carry on and hopefully we'll get some more holes drilled before the end of this session. I'm well, just running this souped up program if you like this one I've been tweaking a bit and it should alternate between this side and here back and forth each time and it looks like it's doing what I want it to. 
and I think the spacing will be right. The, the proof of the pudding will be when I put the correct tools in. It looks okay so far, but anyway, I'm going to let it run and just watch what happens. And here we go. And let's see what happens here. And that's the drilling cycle, as you can see. The speeds are rather fast for that feed, but no, I mean, I'll just slow them down on the... Oh, of course, I've got them at 150%, but even that's pretty fast. I will... I think I might go in the, I'll go in the program and change them. OK, well, the first hole didn't go according to plan. It punched a little deeper than I intended, and it might need to be filled and uh, re-drilled, but there's still meat there for the hole and countersinking on the other side, but it might look very pretty, so I'll see what I think later, but so far it's going a bit better. I like to see between the streams of uh, putting fluid, the centre pot marks or the centre drill marks, just nice light uh, markings. They don't particularly need to be in. That's what's so annoying about watching the first hole. Uh, is that actually these don't need to be there because you're drilling down onto a vertical tangentially to the not tangentially but uh, radially through the centre line and the forces, there's no, there should be no forces to move the drill away from where it needs to go. Ok well here we go, we're drilling the holes in the large diameter now, just hope everything's ok, uh, seems to be doing fine so far, I've had a little hiccup with that spot hole. But we'll, we'll see, the proof will be at the finish. Um, that's looking awesome. Now you can see there, the holes are... I don't know if you can actually see that, I can see it up here, but you can see the holes are... There's a bit of clearance there for that countersink, it's very close in that corner. But by the same token, it's very close up against this flange here, so I don't know. Oh. Stop. Okay, uh, well, before the compressor interrupted me, well, we had a major collision there. And I knew, I just didn't get to the controls in time to stop it snapping the drill and also damaging the work. But, uh, going down through my coatings, this is the problem when you change a load of things and this is why I never wanted to take up uh, a job as a pilot because you come down here, 84, 84, dyslexia keep, creeps, creeps in and it becomes 48 uh, and if I was reading an altimeter I could be in trouble. So, that needs changing. Uh, it's a nuisance, it's cost me the job, but uh, the, there is one spare and this is it. So I'm going to have to reset everything because the setup is all upset and start again. Well, this is a super collision. I've never ever seen anything like this before. This thread is absolutely mashed. I can't get this off. I've got a four jaw chuck wedged out against here and I'm using a spanner on here and knocking hell out of it and it's just turning on here and not unscrewing. It's unscrewed so far and then stopped so I don't know. Well I've tried every damn thing I know to get this off and the only thing is going to be a oxyacetylene torch. It is absolutely solid. Just doesn't want to know. I just don't understand what the hell's happened there. But uh, that's a job absolutely wrecked. Uh, I still haven't checked the, the mill out. The mill's okay I think. It's just shifted the table 
on the the rotary table on the on the uh, mill table. But this is just useless now. I'm going to have to make another one of these before I start. So to hell with it. I'm going to go in now. It's after midnight and I'm tired. I'm angry. Okay, well, we're now <laughs> back to basics again. I've just put this hub back on the mandrel after I won a hell of a struggle to get it off. Uh, basically, I had to put bars, or well, grip this end on here with the uh, jaws on the inside of this recess. And I put the free jaw on this end, which was out here. Put a bar in here. Well, put a bar in the gap between the jaws on the free jaw and the edge of the lathe, and another bar in here. A three foot piece of pipe on it, and I had to arrive on it to really and hit it with a hammer to get it off. And there was surprisingly little damage to the threads, but it's amazing how tough that was to sort out. So I'm going to try and dress this up. It suffered a lot of damage while I was trying to get it off, but there's the main damage that the, the spindle did. Uh, it's flattened that profile off, but I think if I dress it off, it'll look not too bad. Uh, it's a shame because the holes are the holes are really good. They're in the right place, and uh, you can see everything looks pretty good. They, these holes are fine. I knew they would be. A lot of time went into them. But anyway, I'm going to try and dress this up and see what it... Well, when I first started this uh, job, I had it mounted in the CNC mill and I thought I'd better put a reference mark on it. And here is that reference mark. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Right. Yes. And it lines up pretty closely and I'm really pleased with that. It means that I probably can't get repeatability. This has gone a little past the, the original mark. But I'm sure I could get that right on the mark itself. In fact, it, you know, it just depends on what angle you look at it. It's it's probably correct. It's just when I when I go back to take up this the where I left off with the program, uh, I need to be able to um, set it up, and I'll you know I should be able to get that pretty close right from the word go. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm really pleased that things have turned out right. Well, okay, well now, post crash, I have lined everything up and set my X, Y's and Z's as near as I can anyway. 0 0.004, that should be 0. Uh, X minus 238, which is there. Let's, let's just adjust this. This is to drill this hole, the holes. So it's going to go to X minus 238. Um, these are your feeds. 98, 84, that was a culprit that I believe it was the 84 I had the wrong way around and had 48 somewhere in the program when I changed all my depths and uh, it went a little deeper than I expected and I just didn't get time to stop the machine before it made a mess uh, broke the uh, carbide drill that I bought specially for the job and uh, Got me in a bad temper for a little while, but anyway, I've recovered. And like I say, we've got x minus 238, and we've got uh, a minus 97, which is where are we? A minus 97, and we're all set to go. Z is where it should be. Uh, once I get the new tool in, I will uh, put that in the offsets and get started. But I'm not going to do any more tonight, I've done well to recover and hopefully uh, the next the rest of it should go all right in fact before I even do anything I'm going to check that G code once more anyway at least I've recovered I feel a bit better about things